<laughs> uh, oh, hello and welcome, welcome and hello. I just, uh, I told Amber I was going to come in and shoot video and she's in the kitchen, you know, doing uh, work, make, making soap actually. And uh, so I shout, hey, I'm going to shoot video. I love you. And she, and I said, I love you. And she just goes, yeah. <laughs> so that's... <laughs> That's that's where we stand right now. I actually sat down, turned on all my uh, all my recording software, got my mic all set up, got everything all set up, and I sat down and saw how scruffy I was, like I hadn't shaved. So I just got up, went and shaved real fast. No big deal. Hope I look a little bit more, you know, uh, presentable to everybody. And just as a warning, this this vape video may include bodily functions such as burping. And if such things offend you, it's probably best to turn off the video. And if you're a normal human being who can look past such normal bodily functions as burping, then uh, please continue on with me. It's greatly appreciated. Well, hey, everybody. This is uh, this is the Thursday. This is the vlog. I have some vlog notes. I have just a couple things set up. I got some stuff I wanted to talk about. Um, I have a very large supply of the St. Bernardus ABT-12 uh, <laughs> beer. And I may have mentioned this. Um, I may have mentioned this. Um, in the last vlog. Did I mention this in the last vlog? I don't think I mentioned this in the last vlog. So, <clears throat> pardon me, that was also unfortunately a, a, a bodily uh, function. Anyway, we had a uh, we had a vape meet here in Carson City. Uh, we're gonna have another one on the uh, on the first with uh, local shops Tasty Vapes and Nevada Vapor Supply at the Carson Nugget on March 1st. See, there's one coming right now. See, you didn't even hear anything, but uh, Rick, um, Rick, guy named Rick, my new buddy Rick, uh, he showed up and just had a whole bunch. He had like, I don't know, five of the big bottles of the St. Bernardus ABT-12, so I'm good for at least a couple days on my consumption. This is a cup. Fuck yeah. That's a cup that uh, my dear friends... Slipgator and V fan bought for me, uh, whom I haven't talked to in a very long time. Although I do follow them on the Instagrams, they did just get a new corgi puppy, um, which is adorable. Um, I miss them greatly, and every time I use this cup, uh, I think of them. So here's to you, Slip. Thank you. Mm. Oh man, oh man, that's just delicious. Um, first things first, everything looking slash sounding okay. I noticed in my last videos in the triple feature that I uploaded, which I hope everybody enjoyed, there was some kind of like weird ghosting going on when I moved really fast, and it looks like it's kind of still happening. Although I don't do this motion very often, it seems to be a little bit, uh, a little bit better now. I don't know. Uh, I just noticed some really bad ghosting, and I, and I changed some settings on some certain things, as well as changed some settings. Everybody uh, overwhelmingly said, Put your Yeti microphone on this setting, which is the, it looks like a little heart, upside down heart, and uh, so far that seems to be working really, really well. Much, much better. I've turned the gain down a little bit. Uh, I'm trying not to bump the table as much like that so it doesn't make those awful noises, but I just want to make sure that everything is looking, sounding like a good quality product uh, here in this web zone. Um, so uh, first thing up. Uh, there's a series on Netflix, and my longtime subscriber, Fred, emailed me and said, Hey, I'm not sure if you saw this. In fact, let me just try to uh, let me just try to get to his email so I can read it word for word so I'm not, you know, uh, butchering things. That's not the right email. Where'd you go, Fred? Hey, guys, Todd here. Todd. Todd. I don't know what I'm doing right now. Hang on a sec. Hang on a sec, buddy. Where you are, Fred? Ah, there you go. House of Cards, uh, Season 2, Episode 1. E-cig exposure uh, and an awesome soundbite that says what vaping is all about. It's not going to make headlines or anything, but it's the perfect quick exposure for vaping. It's available through their online streaming, uh, so you don't need to get the disc. There's, I'm oh, sorry, I'm picking my nose. Sorry, bodily function. Uh, there's probably a way to cut it and put it on YouTube or your Grim Green site. The line quote is approximately 15 minutes and 50 seconds into Season 2, Episode 1. 
Uh, maybe it's silly of me to point this out to you. Not at all, Fred. You are not the first person to email me that, but you were the most recent person and the most thorough person. So thank you, Fred. If you have Netflix and you watch House of Cards on the streaming, which I don't, I've actually never watched that show. Shh, don't tell anyone I've been meaning to, but there's a lot of shows I've been meaning to watch. I just don't, uh, I don't have the time to catch up. My latest uh, pitfall that I've been watching is Community. Basically, the way my life works is I have exactly one half of one hour before I go to sleep to watch television, and then I have about a half hour before I have to go back to work so that I can watch some more television. So I like to stick to short shows that are easily digestible and that I don't need, my nose is really itchy, and that I don't need to like invest a lot of time in. I work graveyard shift, and I was trying to watch Battlestar Galactica, before I went to bed in the morning and I kept falling asleep halfway through every episode and it was upsetting me because I'd have to go back and remember where I left off and I'm like oh yeah I was here you know Starbuck was in the Cylons and and uh, I just I couldn't get through the show so lately I've been watching Community which is oh just just a wonderful wonderful show but thank you Fred for sending that for sending that my way um, if you watch the show check it out. Uh, it's funny because I have a little I have a little note here in my vlog notes that says no first impressions, sad face. Uh, and then for some reason I didn't delete that and then I put a whole bunch of first impressions that I could do underneath it. The first thing that I don't have has been tested and deemed suitable for its intended purpose. Please do not use in any other manner. My target audience are vapors. So I should say my target audience is vapors. I believe that's correct. Therefore, if you are under 18, do not purchase these. Please use with a 30 amp battery. This batch ranges from 0.25 ohms to 0.5 ohms. Um, please do not leave. Uh, please do not let the heaters touch the base or wall of the RDA. They are hot and they can heat up to 800 degrees. Trust me, just don't try it. Um, and then he has some pictures, and I'll post a link to this in the description. Um, they're out of stock, and I've been wanting to buy some have not been able to buy any uh, because they're out of stock. But basically it looks like wires that you would connect to a rebuildable atomizer posts and then there's like a donut, like a round ceramic disc that evidently has canthal inside of it. Not really sure how this is gonna work. You can dry burn it to clean it, you can re-wick it. I, I mean, I'm really interested to try these, these vape-in donuts. Um, like I said, they're out of stock so I haven't been able to to order them or to get them in any capacity uh, and there's nothing to like sign up for to uh, to get on a mailing list of when they're in stock so if you have any that you want to part with and sell to me or if uh, you know when the vaping donuts are going to be back in stock my next batch in 20 to 25 days uh, please Facebook page distributor bulk inquiry yeah, so there you go. Um, yeah, FatDaddyVapes.com and the Vapin Donuts, which I'm very interested to try. And that kind of leads me right into the uh, right into the next uh, segment. Uh, guy on YouTube whose name, and I apologize, I will not be able to remember at this moment. Pardon me. Stand by, please. Um, oh, come on. He sent me some wire, and uh, it's called Gplat 28. Gplat 28. I'm assuming, oh, come on, no, you lunatic. Why does Google hate everything that I stand for? Gplat 28. Uh, Cali Vapors has a thing, American Wire Gauge, Vapor. Vape Kings on Instagram. I don't know where this came from, and I'm gonna do my best to remember his name. I'm gonna have to look back through my messages and emails. Gplat28 wire. Um, it's a resistance wire from you know in the Canthal family. Uh, I used it to build one thing so far, and that one thing I built happened to be on the Neptune of which I don't have any juice for, so what the hell is, what am, what good am I right now, honestly? Uh, hold please, I need to grab some juice. Ah! Ah, 
found it. Um, but yeah, he sent me some of this wire, and I built a uh, built a quick and dirty dual coil on here, and that actually looks like I don't even need you. So I'm an idiot. Um, it seems a lot like Canthal because I'm assuming that it is Canthal. It seems to be a lot softer than Canthal wire. It seems to be a lot, lot softer. Not quite as springy, I guess, although that's springy. My one build experience with it was was quite nice. It was really, uh, really easy. It comes it says it comes with organic cotton. Um, but anyway, yeah, G-Plat 28. G-Plat 28 wire. I don't know what's special about this wire. It vapes fine. I mean, it vapes just great. Doesn't feel any different than Canthal. Doesn't taste any different than Canthal. It's seems a little softer but that could just be anecdotal you know what i mean that could just be my experience with it is it seems a little bit softer a little bit less rigid um i'm assuming the 28 means 28 gauge but then again i know very little about this g plat 28 wire uh googling googling does uh very little help uh vape kings i mean there's one video of this guy that says g plat wire speechless maybe this is the guy that sent it to me jay jay did you send it to me i can't you know what he posted a comment on my vlog and i tried to remember his name and i'm a jerk and i didn't remember it g plat wire no there's just instagram posts Gplat 26 and 24 in stock now at Vape Kings. Okay, uh, I don't know much about the Gplat. Seems to be in the Canthal family of wires and it's quite easy to build with. I've enjoyed my experience on it. Of course, I will report more uh, after I, you know, have some more time, blah, 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 this, that, and the other to spend with it. So, Gplat. Gplat. Gplat 28. I'm assuming 28 is the gauge because I see Gplat 26 and Gplat 24, and I could be pronouncing that wrong. Maybe it's G plate. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. But yeah, so Gplat 28. Uh, what I want to do next, and this is going to be a little bit like vape inception right now. I'm going to have a review inside this video. I'm gonna knock out a quick like five minute banger on the Aspire Nautilus tank because there's already so many Aspire Nautilus reviews that I'm just gonna put mine inside of this vlog. It's gonna be a vape video within a vape video. Crazy. <clears throat> hey everybody, Grim 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 Knock on ah, Aspire Nautilus. So the Aspire Nautilus, I bought this for myself uh, from DiscountVapors.com. And I may mention this already, bought it from DiscountVapors.com. It was about uh, $35, DiscountVapors.com. Let me get you the exact price that I paid for it. It was about 35 bucks, though. Yes, I am. Take me to Discount Vapors, you lunatic. The aero tank is here. Nobody cares. Well, at least I don't. Um, um, uh, why is their site so hard to navigate? Aspire. Aspire. Let's just search for Aspire. I don't know why this is so difficult for me. Here it is. Aspire Nautilus Adjustable Airflow Tank. $34.99. What did I say? $35? Bucks? So it's $34.99, and it's very much like the Aspire, just the BDCs, in that it's a tank with a base, and you plug a head into the base, you fill up your tank, you put it all together, and you vape it. This has adjustable airflow holes on it. It goes from quite big, which I believe is one and a half millimeters, 
1.8 millimeters. So the biggest one is 1.8 millimeters, and it's a very sort of airy, swooshy draw. Mm -hmm. Jam! Hold, please. I apologize, I'm not exactly sure why Amber had the, uh, the volume uh, on the television up at, you know, 29 or whatever the highest that it goes is. $35, uh, 1.8 millimeter is the biggest, so it has a very kind of airy, swooshy, it feels like the old pro tank, how everybody used to complain, oh, it's too airy, it kind of is that airy, but, uh, I don't know, it seems to work pretty well. The next closest one down, when you adjust this little ring, you'll see it happen right there. According to this website, is 1.4 millimeters. And this is the one I've probably been using the most. It tightens it up uh, just a little bit, but not so it's big, whooshy, airy airflow. The flavor is a... Uh, is highly decent. Um, it's got sort of a reduced chamber in there, so the coils sit down low, and then there's a, a very thin, narrow tube going up the middle, and I think that produces kind of like a, like a much better flavor. The next one down in there, Amber's yelling at the dog, the next one down is 1.1 millimeters, and this is kind of where it gets starts to be more of a tighter, tighter airflow. Seems like the flavor's a little bit more intense the the tighter you go down on the airflow. And then the next one is 0.9 millimeters. I apologize. I feel like I have a something in my nose. This is where it gets uh, really, really tight. I rarely or have ever used the smallest 0.9 millimeter on here. Um, and I noticed that on that last hit, it was kind of getting just very slightly burnt. The only problem that I've ever had with the Aspire Nautilus is that it never gets flooded, it never gets gurgly, which I love. But occasionally I have to stick my finger over the airflow hole and kind of pull some juice in there. You should see bubbles happen. Mmm. Wicked tight draw. Wicked intense flavor though. Man, that is a tight, tight, tight airflow hole. 0 0.9 millimeters, man, that's tight. Uh, I kinda like that, I actually kinda like that. I'm gonna put this back on the 1.1 millimeter airflow hole. That kinda seems to be my favorite. It's tight, it ends up pulling enough juice in there. One thing that I've noticed is you kind of have to draw a little bit harder on this to suck the juice in there. All tanks like this work on that negative pressure, that vacuum that's created to pull juice into the airflow or pull juice into the coils like that. And I've noticed that the 1.1 millimeter is kind of the best balance of it's a tight draw and if you drag hard you won't get nearly as many burny burny hits as you will as if the airflow is wide open and you're not creating that vacuum to pull the juice in. Uh, shockingly, shockingly good. I've been recommending these to everybody. They're 35 bucks, and you can get them at a lot of places. I happen to buy mine from discountvapors.com. Uh, it says, sorry, we're currently out of stock. Please check back with us soon. If you can find one of these, just just buy it. It's a uh, surprisingly, surprisingly good uh, and satisfying vape. Mr. Rip Trippers, Mr. Jump Cut himself, does have a video on rebuilding this with cotton and a single coil as a, opposed to the uh, dual coil that's in here now. Um, it's kind of a weird little complicated system and I would just assume use the regular heads, but you know what, if I get a wild hair up my ass someday, I'll, uh, I'll just rip this apart and, and build a coil in there. I've had this same head going in here for about, since well, it was February 2nd was basically my really first day with it. So what's that, like three weeks? Yeah, just about. 
just about three weeks with this uh, same head. I've just been filling it up with juice um, and it's been great. It's been reliable. Um, and there's some nights where I'm looking around at what I want to bring to work and I'm like, is that? All right, an Aspire Nautilus. And I'll just take it. And, I, and I've been relying on it heavily while I'm at work and uh, it hasn't let me down. So coming very highly recommended, the Aspire Nautilus. Wow, surprising. They should call it the Surpriser Nautilus, except that's a dumb name, but it much more accurately describes this, this little tank right here. Highly recommend it. Uh, it's super easy to fill up. In fact, I'm gonna take this apart just to show you how super easy it is to fill up. The bottom cap comes off. In fact, they have, uh, they have little nubbins on this bottom cap right here, so you can just take it off. Just unscrew it off like this. That's where your head is that you take in and out and replace. You fill your juice up as high as you want to fill it. You put this back down and it screws in. Just screw it in nice and snug. I screw mine in uh, quite snug. Snug, snug. I don't want to crank it down, but I want it to be snug. Top part is snug. Everything is snug. Haven't had... Uh, Ever any leaking or gurgling issues with it. I get the occasional burnt hit, but it's really just if I'm not dragging hard enough. And if you drag hard enough, it's going to keep flowing that juice in there. I'm using a 50/50 PGBG blend, and it's been uh, it's been great. So there you go. That's what I got. Blah blah blah. Thanks so much for watching, hey, everybody. That's Spider Nose. Keep on vaping. Really good. Now that that's out of the way, this Aspire Nautilus is really good. So I do have two more things to talk about in the first impressions world um, without uh, before we get to viewer mail. And I don't have this on here, but uh, uh, Vapor for Life is coming out with some new products like they do from time to time and one of their old products that I love and just continue to use all the time I take it with me out and about to the casinos to Las Vegas it's the Vapor Zeus Vapor for Life Vapor Zeus love it it's perfect size it's about the size of a cigar it kind of looks like a cigar auto switch big cardamizer I've loved it And they have some sort of giant Vapor Zeus coming out now that is like, a, well, it's gigantic, really. That's the original. This is the new one here. It's about a mm, solid inch taller and uh, very, very much wider on the diameter of it. It feels, uh, it feels like a mod, like if I was to take this and just hold it like a cigar... Not quite as thick. Still thick, still feels big. Yes, honey? <laughs> so I was getting one of these out of the, um, the jar. Yeah? <laughs> you know what I thought? What? Jeff Kazinger. <laughs> that joke would take far too long to explain. <laughs> She's eating hostess zingers. Why don't you toss me one of them bad boys? Jeffica Zinger? Zinger. <laughs> really good throw. I'll get that after the video. Hey, listen. Hey. I love you. What I'm you not mean? sure if this new mic will pick you up, actually. Hi, I love you. Just wanted to see if you're going to make me dinner. We're going to go grocery shopping after this, yes. I'm not going anywhere. Yes, you're going grocery I shopping with me. I have to make my cocoa butter. Jim, you're going to grocery shopping with me. Dang on it. Nah. Okay, uh, see you shortly, honey. Oh, is it not being dismissed? <laughs> yeah, that, that means this this segment is done. The Amber segment is done. Okay, see you, vloggers. Bye. Miss you like crazy. Nate, don't look at your attitude on your face. There's no my attitude. Is there an attitude on my face? There's no attitude, attitude. on my face. Bye. I promise you. <laughs> Bye. And, uh... And there she goes. Anyway, huge Vapor Zeus. Um, I don't have any uh, real information on this. Um, 
the the new Wow Vapor Zeus. So it's kind of like a new brand for them called Wow. Uh, 510 threading, uh, automatic, uh, and manual mode. I have it manual mode right now. There's a little button here that lights up. Uh, five volt regulated using single coil, two ohm cartomizers. Uh, black, blue, green, cigar, and magenta are the colors it comes in. I'm assuming this is the XL because it's the biggest. I can't imagine it being much bigger than this, but it comes in small, medium, and XL. No large? <laughs> it should have been medium, large, and XL. That's fine. Uh, this is the 1300 milliamp version. Um, the 13 milliamp version has 15 to 20 hours of use, takes 5 to 12 hours to charge, depending on the method. 5 with the USB chargers, 12 with a swim, slim charger. Uh, uses 510 smile omizers as the connection. And uh, yeah, so the new smile omizer as well, these are 2.5 ohms, same colors, silicone tip. You can use them on your Vapor Zeus batteries. Uh, the thing is gigantic. And uh, I haven't been using it as much as I should have been, but that's because, now, I know I'm a liquid vendor, but they sent along some juice as well. Tobacco menthol, smiling tobacco menthol from Wow Vapor, um, which is part of Vapor for Life. And I filled this up even after I smelled it, and I went, oh, that might, huh, that might not be good. Um, filled it up anyway, and, uh, I was not disappointed by the juice. It tasted exactly as horrible as I thought it would. Um, which is to say, it kind of tastes like a burning cigarette with a little bit of menthol in it. Where's that button? This flavor just reminds me of uh, when I first started vaping. And... Uh, you guys don't know how good you have it now, but back in 2009, when some of us first started vaping, all we had was China juice. All we had was cartomizers. And we suffered with terrible battery life and underperforming atomizers and uh, China weird burnt rubber flavored juice. But we made it work, damn it. And that's what this, exactly, this is what this juice reminds me of is those first just bright-eyed days of vaping before uh, mech mods, before rebuildable atomizers, before epic clouds of vapor, before USA-made e-liquids, before variable wattage, before DNA-20, before any of that nonsense. This is exactly what that reminds me of. In addition to the gigantor-sized uh, vapor Zeus, wow, we're coming up on 28 minutes. This is going to be a long one, friends. They have uh, these, this tiny little disposable, right? And I believe this is designed to compete with the Enjoy King. It's called the Wow Vapor King, um, which, to be fair, Enjoy King came out way after Vapor for Life had the Vapor King. Uh, the Vapor King was Vapor for Life's first, first release way back in, pardon me, I want to say it was 2010 that they came out with the uh, with the Vapor King. If it wasn't the end of 2010, it was the beginning of 2011, but I think it was the end of, uh, I think it was in 2010. It could have been 2009. No, I think it was in 2010. Um, but uh, it comes in a similar package. I just tore the plastic off. It comes with a little, uh, this is how you use this product sort of uh, sheet. And then it comes with a little, disposable that are shockingly like the Vapor Kings, I mean, or like the uh, Enjoy Kings. They feel kind of papery. It's got a squishy, squishy mouth tip. This is uh, 36 milligram strong tobacco, equal to more than one pack of cigarettes, equal to more than one pack of cigarettes. Ugh. Let's see how this works out. Hmm. Mm mm same flavor <laughs> that same tobacco flavor it actually tastes a lot like a cigarette mm. that flavor is uh is pretty unmistakable pardon me while i throw that away um pretty unmistakable it's like that typical 
Chinese tobacco flavor, which isn't bad. It's just not what I'm used to. After vaping things like, you know, Starship One and uh, Oasis Mist and Slender Man and all these other flavors, um, it's, it's hard to go back. It's hard to go back to that Chinese... Uh, I feel a little bit like I'm cheating right now. It's hard to go back to that Chinese tobacco flavor, but... This is what I looked like when I was a smoker. I used to flick the butt like this to get the ashes off. So the uh, vapor production isn't amazing. It's kind of on par, I guess, with the Enjoy King. The flavor is not amazing, but it's kind of on par with that Enjoy King. I would like to see these everywhere instead of the Enjoy King because honestly Vapor for Life is a way way better company than Enjoy uh, will ever be. Um, I respect Vapor for Life so much more than I do uh, Enjoy. So yeah coming out soon. Wow this is the giant Wow Vapor Zeus and this is the tiny tiny Wow Vapor King. Uh, I'm not sure of a release date not sure if I'm even supposed to be talking about this yet but you know what it's uh it's what I do it's how I roll and uh, kind of, kind of, kind of cool, kind of a cool little thing. I could see using this at the casino, like playing blackjack. Just hit me. Like that might be cool. Thirty-six is pretty strong, although it doesn't feel like thirty-six. Kind of acts. Kind of performs like a little uh, like a little cigarette. I'm going to leave that right there. Last thing, last thing before we get to viewer mail is uh, I wanted to talk about this. Sorry. Ooh, I didn't mean to bang the table. That was probably pretty loud. I want to talk about this. Uh, not the Duke, but this little top on part. This is called the Keg. Okay. This came from Vapor Craze. Um, Jay, I believe is his name, um, sent this over to me. And basically, it's an alternative top cap for the Igo L and for the Helios. And right now, underneath here, I have a Helios. Um, I'm not gonna do an epi closey, but there's three holes. Is it gonna focus? There's three holes on that side and three holes on that side. So you get a big, a nice big uh, airflow. And it comes with this drip tip adapter so that when you pull your drip tip off, like so, there's a very large hole for dripping which sounds dirtier than it is one two three four but there's a very large hole for dripping so I use this little dripping uh, you know adapter put that on there and then I have a drip tip in there so it kind of makes a complete uh, complete looking thing I've seen people using this without the drip tip in there um, which I wouldn't want to do uh, I would just put my drip tip in the adapter and then use the adapter to to drip through on the keg it's not super secure it comes out easy enough to drip in but i haven't had any problems with it like wobbling or pulling out by accident um huge airflow and it's adjustable so you get those huge i mean insane clouds of vapor um, it's adjustable and i experimented you basically screw this top part down to cover up those holes and i experimented with it like making it a much tighter airflow so I could do the mouth to lung hits and something about that tight airflow just wrecked me with throat hits. I'm gonna try it right now but I guarantee you I'm gonna at least cough once. <coughs> yeah, that happens. And this is uh, six milligram juice. <coughs> I can't do it, I just can't do it. <coughs> it's not gonna happen so I'm gonna open these back up to the biggest setting so that I can take a normal sized human toot and so I won't uh, I won't look like a complete wuss much uh, much better but yeah that's the keg uh, that comes from vapor craze and uh I was actually on the waiting list to buy one because they were out of stock uh, shortly before Jay, gosh, I hope that's his name, before he emailed me uh, and uh, desired to put it on video, which I was more than uh, obliged to do. It fits on there uh, quite well. That's the Helios under there. 
just vaporing away. Look at all that vapor. And then uh, same thing, it's just a top cap. So it's gonna fit right over your, you know, right over your Helio. So you line it up with the coils, snap it on there, and uh, you're good to go. It's like a it's like a completely different head for your Helios. And me, I had that plastic Helios cap, which I was getting very wary of. I was like, oh, I don't know if I really like this so much anymore. This has breathed new life into my Helios. Um, I have a dual micro coil on there, which you can't see. Um, but uh, yeah, this, this keg, keg, keg top cap has been working out just fantastic. So, moving forward, um, I want to do a giveaway for that Spire, but I don't know how to do it. I want to do something fun, but I don't know have I don't have any ideas. So if you have any ideas, um, please flood my inbox uh, with giveaway ideas. Um, I saw a new thing called Rafflecopter, which seems kind of cool. Um, might do something like that, but yeah, I want to give away that Spire because I realized after I shot that video, I was like, I'm going to put this on my shelf, and then as I was like setting it down, I'm like... I would rather somebody else use this than have it be another friggin' trophy on my shelf of uh, vapeness. So yeah, so we're gonna give it away. In fact, we might end up doing the uh, doing a Cool Fire Two, Cool Fire One giveaway. So if you have any giveaway ideas, I don't know. You know, doing the pictures with using a certain hashtag is always fun, or making a video or like a Photoshop contest, or I did the video with the clouds and that was fun, but really long and drawn out. So I don't have any contest ideas, unfortunately, right now. So we'll all have to wait for the Spire uh, giveaway. And if your YouTube comments aren't showing up, you may have noticed that in the vlog, in the last vlog, and then in the Monday triple feature, which again, I hope you all enjoyed, I left YouTube comments on and active. Um, it's actually a little bit easier to reply to them now. Um, I'm not as on it because the comments pile up so fast that I'm like, this one, uh, this one, okay, hi. Okay, thank you, uh, maybe try this, uh, do that. So I can't reply to all of them, but I can reply to a, a lot of them, like a bunch of them that I can. Um, so a lot of comments that are not spam in any way are getting marked as spam by YouTube. Um, so if you don't see your comment show up on my video, that means that YouTube has some, for some reason, flagged your YouTube account and considers it spam now. So you might wanna get that sorted out. I clicked over to my, these could be possible spam, and it was like just pages and pages and pages of normal comments that are not spam in any way. There were a few spams in there, but for the most part, they were all, normal comments and it bums me out to think that people are trying to comment on my video going hey you you suck um and then they can't uh they can't they can't post a comment so if your comment doesn't show up chances are youtube for some reason or another has flagged your youtube channel and is marking it as spam at least in my comment section last thing real quick before viewer mower mail vapecalc.com go there just go there and use it i use it literally every day and it's funny because i use it when people email me when they're like what's a good wattage to run a 0.4 ohm coil at or you know questions that can be easily answered i just click over to vape calc i put in the numbers and i go here you go here's here's what's happening if you're doing a 0.4 at 4 volts it's 40 watts you know what i mean vapecalc.com i'll put a link to it in the description to this video go there learn it use it love it it's one of the best uh resources that i have found um, i also added a new link in fact i might just make a vape calc link and put it on grimgreen.com but i added a new link to grimgreen.com in the vape resources section which i feel is going to be incredibly incredibly helpful to people let me click over there right now vape resources uh, on grimgreen.com you go to grimgreen.com backslash peeps <laughs> and uh pardon me down at the bottom there's a new link for a website called best clearomizer and this site's whole function is to catalog rate and describe clearomizers 
So if you are a Clearomizer user, they have Clearomizers versus Atomizers versus Cartomizers. It literally has every Clearomizer, T3S Bottom Coil, EVOD, Mini Divide, the Titan, the Ice Smoke Mega, the Ice Smoke Mega Mini, the Kanger Pro Tank 2, the Wickless CE4, the E-Slim, the CE4. It just goes on and on. And there's all these Clearomizers, the MS MT3S Clearomizer, the Kanger Unitank, the Pro Tank, the Aero Tank, it just keeps going. They have every Clearomizer, every, almost every Clearomizer listed. I don't see the Inokin ones on here. Come on, get on that, Mr. Best Clearomizer. Anyway, it's a really cool, really cool site. Uh, if you do Clearomizers or if you want to know what you have and you don't know what you have, like you bought it at a brick and mortar and they're like, oh, I don't know, that's just what we call... Uh, the super duper pizza baron clearomizer you know that's just what we call it and then you get home and you're like what is the super duper baron super pizza baron clearomizer you can go on here and chances are you'll see it you can figure out what it is you can watch reviews for it you can see if you know if it's worth your time to continue using it anyway it's a very cool very cool website next up is viewer mail. Viewer mail. Why hasn't it changed that damn thumbnail yet? So my last vlog, I put the wrong date in the thumbnail. I've updated it at least a hundred times with a brand new thumbnail picture and YouTube will not update it. It's not 1.13.14. That is ridiculous. It's 2.13.14 and uh, YouTube just hates me. They just do and it Ah, bothers me. Why won't they? Why won't that fix? Don't know why that won't fix. I've tried to fix it. I fixed it a bunch. Um, so I do have a lot of YouTube PMs piling up. So I apologize. I'm gonna pick one here at random. Mr. Jeremy and KFun issues. What's up, Nick? Good to see your new vids. I've been having some issues with my KFun light -like clone. Don't have any experience with the clone, sir. It's giving me a slightly burnt taste. I've read some stuff about possible wicking issues and rebuilt it a few times. And I'm still getting the burnt taste after taking a longer draw. If you have any suggestions for me, it would be greatly appreciated. And thanks ahead of time. Uh, and thanks for all your great videos. You've been very helpful in my vaping journey. Well, Jeremy, you're very welcome for the videos. I'm very glad you enjoy them. <clears throat> I don't have any issues. I mean, I don't have any experience with the K-Fun Lite clones, unfortunately. Um, one thing I will say is that the KFUN wicking system is based on juice going up into the wicks and then back down. So the KFUN, I'm going to talk a lot with my hands right now, has this like thing, this chamber that your coil is in. And there's a tube right here that goes up to your mouth, right? Your coil's in here. There's holes. There's little channels in there. And when you take a drag, it pulls juice up into there, creating this little tide pool effect. And while you're taking a drag, your coils should be getting saturated with liquid. And then when you let go of that pressure, the juice goes back out. And now you have wet, wet moistened coils in there. That's exactly how it works. If you jam too much wick in there, whether it be cotton, silica, eco wool, XC116, whatever your wick of choice is, if you put too much wick in there, you block those, those juice channels. So when you take a drag, the juice will go, oh, oh I can't get in, oh, I can't get in, oh, I can't get in, and go back out dry hits. So use less wick than you think you need. Use some wick, just not so much wick that you're blocking off those airflow channels. That's the number one issue I found with K-Funds is if you use too much wick, you're gonna block those juice flow channels. The juice isn't gonna be able to get up and create that tide pool effect, which is going to lead to, uh, which is going to lead to, uh, to multiple, multiple dry hits. Uh, Bernard. Bernard uh, emailed me uh, at my nick at groomgreen.com email address and said, Hey Nick, I wanted to know your opinion on vaping around children. I have my nephew staying for a few days a week and he's within close proximity. I feel slightly self-conscious about vaping around him or exposing him to vapor. I try to angle the vapor out a window or not vape in the same room. I would be interested in knowing your opinion about this and whether secondhand vapor is safe and free from carcinogens or nicotine. I wouldn't really vape around kids, but then again, I don't really have any kids. Um, on Christmas, 
uh, Eve, it wasn't Christmas Eve, it was a couple days before Christmas Eve, we had a Christmas party here, invited a bunch of friends, some of my friends from work, and uh, my buddy Brandon, who we call Meat, who I go to the gym with, he brought his uh, boy Sean, and Sean's just a little, I mean, I don't know how old kids are, like he was this old, I guess, I don't know, he was like four feet old, maybe three and a half feet old, um, so little, little tyke, right, um, I didn't really vape around him. And it wasn't that I was like consciously like, oh, there's the child. I can't vape around a child. It was just kind of out of respect. Uh, I didn't want to have him exposed to clouds of vapor. And I didn't want him trying to grab my juice bottles or maybe grabbing my mod or something like that. We live in a child-free home. So there's juice bottles in every drawer in the kitchen. There's juice bottles just sitting on my desk. I don't keep things out of kids' reach. So I'm not like in tune with keeping things out of kids reach because I have no experience in that. As far as saying secondhand vapor is safe and free from any carcinogens or nicotine, my answer is I don't know. The rational person in me tells tells me that it's probably much less harmless than cigarette smoke. But we have one study right now, the you know the the uh, the IVAX QS spike. He's gonna love that. The IVAX project, which was the indoor vapor air quality study, uh, which was funded by everyone in the community multiple multiple times, and uh, <clears throat> basically their objective to this was to assess the potential health impacts regarding the use of e-cigarettes uh, and. There was something in there about secondhand vapor, but I don't, uh, I don't remember where it, where it was. So um, they do have a sort of a press release. They have a uh, comparison of effects of e-cigarette vapor and cigarette smoke on indoor air quality. Basically, they came to the conclusion um, that there was no immediate danger and no potential side effects of being around secondhand vapor. Mostly, I would be worried about kids like accidentally reaching for a bottle or trying to put the atomizer in their mouth or something like that. As far as the vapor goes, I don't know. I wouldn't really vape around kids. Maybe just vape in another room. Maybe be old school and go outside to vape, you know, while your little nephew is there. Um, I wouldn't expose him, especially if he's not familiar with cigarettes. And, you know, I know there's a lot of vaping parents who explain to their kids, I used to smoke. I used to smell really bad. And now I use this so I don't have to smoke. It's not for you. It's just for me. You know what I mean? Demetrius has kids. And I was just listening to the TVA show. And he was saying something very similar along the lines of how much his kids support his vaping because they you know they know that you know daddy used to smell really bad they didn't want to they didn't want to hug they didn't want anything because he smelled so bad from cigarettes and now this vaping he doesn't have to smoke cigarettes so i think if you know if you're if they're your kid and you educate them then i think there's uh you know a, a different line there than if it's just your nephew you might you might not want to expose him to vapor to vaping he doesn't need to learn what cigarettes are he doesn't really need to learn what e-cigarettes are it's probably best just to uh steer clear of that whole catastrophe and just go outside go vape in another room go vape in the bathroom uh i don't see anything wrong with doing that nothing shameful uh really you're just protecting your your nephew, which isn't your child. If it's your child, then certainly you can explain to them what this is to stay away from it and uh, and this, that, and the other. But if it's your nephew, uh, there's kind of a gray area there. Probably best to just keep it away from him uh, all around. So that's what I got for right now. That wasn't too long. That was only 50 minutes. Um, Thank you so much for watching, everybody. This has been a very long uh, vlog. Dino, I hope you enjoyed your drive. And to everybody else, what should I grab? What should I grab? Opus D with the Spire Nautilus. Until next time, let's keep on vaping.